I was sick prior to this anyway, okay, with other issues. So that's neither here nor there. But anyway, my question is when, because by law, he cannot fire me if I am sick or fatigued. If I tell her that I can't drive that truck today. Now, what I want to know is who enforces that. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. And the load was by my house, so I stayed home overnight. Yes, I picked it up. It's at the truck stop. And I told her I wasn't going to try to leave till around 3 o'clock this afternoon to see if my migraine went away. Because I got a migraine really bad because I've got a head cold. And, you know, I'm taking chemo. I'm taking chemo, so I I don't have an immune system. You know what I'm saying? It's compromised. So I told her, you know, I'll be rolling by 3 o'clock, drive till 11, stop for my 10, start driving at 9 again, drive for 8 again, and then do my 10, and then uh, roll on the rest of the mile. He said, well, you're not you're not going to make it to your delivery by 4 p.m. Thursday. I'm 23 hours away. But anyway, he's trying to force me to drive. And I, I told her I can't do that. You know, but she said, I need you to move. OK, fine. So my question is, you know, they got that rule where DOT, where she can't fire us if we're sick or fatigued, and we shut the truck down, right? Okay, great. Well, my question is, we as professional drivers, if we drive where we're sick or fatigued, we we can be in trouble. So who enforces that these companies don't try to strong arm us and force us because that's what she's basically trying to do. She's a safety slash dispatcher and her husband owns the company. So I called my lawyer, you know, because I got the legal shield and they said that they got four hours to get back with me. So it's probably been two maybe, but I, I was just, you know, wondering if you knew the question because, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, like, I really can't, you know, I was trying to, you know, and I got my resignation letter already written up. However, I want to wait till I talk to my lawyer about that because, you know, I'm not planning on dumping the load. I don't do that dirty shit. Not, you know, not in a truck stop. It, worst case scenario, the, the truck will have to go to the yard in Wheeling, Illinois, from Oxford, and I'll take it back. There's nothing, you know, I'm telling you straight up, as of today, right this moment, I'm medically unfit to get behind that wheel. And that's what I've asked way before I even got to this situation because the discussion I was asking other drivers has come up. Like, okay, they make all these rules that we're supposed to be professional. We're not supposed to drive tired. We're not supposed to drive fatigued. But then we're being, you know, strong-armed by some of these companies. And, And that's just the beginning of it, okay? There's other issues. I didn't get paid last week. And now she's wanting to pay, as of October 1st, she's wanting to pay drivers every two weeks. And it's just going downhill. It's a, It has become a hostile work environment. Like, you're trying to browbeat me into being liable because there's been people that have been sick, forced to drive, okay, because we all know that we've been in a situation where our family's first, ultimately. 
and that's where our mindset is. Like, if I don't work, I can't pay my bills. I don't eat. But I know that I'm not in any condition to be moving. And I also know that people have been sick. And like I said, they've been forced, given an ultimatum, to get behind that wheel. And they end up passing out because they're so sick whether it be pain from an excruciating migraine or or otherwise. And she wants me to take that liability and just get jump in her truck. You know, because she's got an L you know, she's she's protected, you know what I mean? Because she's got her LLC so all her shit's protected. So the liability's on me if I crash. You see what I'm saying? And I, I'm not going to be irresponsible for, I. you know, m- yes, my family needs money, but what good am I if I kill somebody? My family's still not getting money. The most important thing in business is honesty, integrity, hard work, family. Never forgetting where we came from. Thank you, Sean. you know my situation now and you know I got a place in Illinois and I bought a place in Texas in Houston you know because I get treatments once a week out of the month I take two different forms of chemo so while I'm out on the road for three weeks I'm taking pills and then when I go home for that fourth week that whole week Every day I'm doing chemo down there because I bought an RV brand new and I parked it five minutes from the cancer treatment center. All about logistics. They they have, um, I think, 14 or 16 trucks. They're Ukrainian. Yeah. Wheeling, Illinois. I know at this point is I'm not moving that truck. That, that I do know. That's set in stone. It's not even up for fucking discussion. I'm I'm not I'm not doing that. I'm a professional driver. Now mind you, she's just and I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. She is fucking the CDL and she's married to the CDL. But it's not the same difference as holding it. And I don't need to explain that to you. You know that. So she thinks because She's fucking it and married to it that she understands from a driver's view and she don't. She don't. And she don't give two shit. She's like majority of the companies out here. They don't care about nothing. Period. The only thing they care about is kissing a broker's ass and, and getting a load. That's it. And because of my situation, I'm too old to change a profession, and I'm sick. So I got to make the best of, of the situation as far as uh, trucking in general. Now, do I have to stay with her? No. But, I mean, I'm just tired of being strong-armed. And she makes rules as she goes to fit her situation. And I can't do it anymore. Like, I've come to a point where I'm my peace. I need my peace. And when I told her that, she was like, well, I don't have peace. Nobody asked you if you had peace. I'm telling you, I need my peace. All I'm trying to do is make my money for my family. That's it. And I'm trying to do it professionally and safely. So I I dated, I got my letter all typed up, right? 
I haven't turned it in because I want to talk to the lawyer first. And, you know, I got legal shield. So I'm going to see what they say about it. But from a legal standpoint, but I mean, I was always told that they cannot force you to drive if you're fatigued or sick. Here's what makes it even more complex. I'm under a federally protected class. She knows that I have a disability. Okay. She already knows that. That's no secret. I've never hid that from anybody. Um, so with that being said... It gets a little tricky, you know what I'm saying? Like if if they were to fire a person with no disabilities, there might be no repercussion. But with me, it, it's very complex and different. And they put those rules in place for a reason, so I will not be uh, taken advantage of or discriminated against. So what was I saying? This is what I tell people. What are you going to do to me that already isn't happening now? What is worse than life itself? Death. That, that There's nothing. There's no in-between. It's, it's one or the other. And I ain't got nothing to lose, really. Okay, I work for All About Logistics. And my question is, if I tell my company that I am sick or fatigued and that I cannot drive that truck, my question is, if they come back and try to manhandle me and force me to drive that truck, who do I contact that enforces the rule of if we're tired or sick that we cannot uh, encounter any retaliation or be forced to drive. Two coffees, one regular and one light. This is a temporary thing. It's like I just can't drive while I'm sick. Sick meaning, you know, my current issue, which is uh, I've had a migraine and a cold. I've got a head cold. And that's just the minor problem of it. The other is the cancer. I can drive with the cancer. I've been doing that for all this time. I just cannot drive right now with the migraine and the head cold. That, that's what it is. I've been performing my job. I'm trying to keep my job, not necessarily with them, but I'm just trying to keep on going period. But that has always been a question in my mind because I've been sick for a while. And I was like, okay, when I tell these people that I can't drive, who am I going to go to if they try to manhandle me? And that's the question I need answered. Who am I going to for help? I'm already got my resignation letter turned in but I, I do have to work so I'm going to have to find unemployment you know employment somewhere else because obviously you know I'm still able bodied to work just not this today right in the moment but I can't abandon the load and I won't abandon the load because my record has been clean the whole eight plus years I've been doing this.
I don't have nothing on my CDL record. And she informed us uh, about a week ago that we all had to get LLCs if we wanted to continue employment there. And I don't even know what the reasoning was about that. But I didn't question it and I didn't get the LLC because I told her, uh, you know, I didn't have the money to get the LLC even if I wanted to. And, you know, we all know why. She didn't pay me last week. She didn't pay like 14 of her drivers and she only paid two. So I'm already out. Like, I don't have the energy. So I already know they're, you know, they're also being audited by the IRS as we speak. So I already know if you're having payroll problems, the IRS is after you. And now you're asking your company drivers, which you have technically said were independent contractors, which leads to misclassification. That's all red flags for me. So I know I'm on my way out, but I won't abandon the equipment or nothing because she's got a thousand dollars of my escrow and companies like that that take escrow like that there's a reason because people are dumping their trucks now I'm not saying it's right I'm just saying people don't dump trucks for no reason but right now I've got a load on my back and I'm not that type of person I will take the, the truck and trailer to the yard before I abandon the load because you aren't going to put nothing on my record. I go out of this world, I plan on going out with a clean record because I came in with a clean record. Our favorite Korean's getting robbed right now. You serious? First he tells me his wife has the flu. Oh man, that bitch would work if she was dead. Then he gives me the coffee for free. Shit. He is getting robbed. How do you want to play it? They said as of October 1st, starting October 1st, the pay would be every two weeks. Well, I'm going to tell you this. He said, well, if all my drivers would drive 10, 11 hours a day, maybe I could make payroll. And at that point, I told her, uh, I call bullshit because you just bought two brand new trucks a month ago. You're driving a Maserati. Are the rates down? Yes. Anything else that you're trying to feed me is just a bunch of BS. The reason drivers drive the way they do is because we've been in it. Like I say, I only drive eight or nine hours a day because I don't want to do a 34-hour reset. The name of the trucking game is to keep that truck moving. So if I'm not taking a 34-hour reset, I'm keeping that truck moving, therefore increasing revenue. But she said because her drivers weren't driving 10, 11 hours. That was why he could only pay two. Damn good coffee. And hot. And here's the thing. I call her, you know, I call her Bobo. Because that's, that's what a clown would do. A clown. Like, you can't clown me and say that you can't pay me, but yet you just bought two brand new trucks and you're driving a Maserati. Make it make sense. And just like I told her, you got paid. I'm not trying to hear it. Honestly, I don't have the energy for nonsense, drama, or bullshit. Okay? I go out here, I do the right thing. Even when people would never do it in the situation that I'm in, being as... I have to do what I have to do. Drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. I had told her, okay, that I laid out the ADA thing because she was like, I have to find you a load like this. And I told her, I said, no, that's not what I said. I didn't never, you know, I can do the job. I've been doing the job even when there's many that wouldn't be doing the job in my position. I have friends that, that, have cancer and they're blessed enough to be able to stay home I'm not in that situation 
I, I don't have that. So I got to do what I got to do, put my big girl panties on, and that's what I've done. And I make the best of it. And I told her, I don't tell you my reality. My reality is I drive that truck eight or nine hours every day. Then after I drive the truck, my head's in the bucket for about eight hours. And I may get some sleep and I may not that much. But I at least try. I'm in sleeper birth sometimes. It, it'll it register 14 hours. And that may look like a lot to people. But imagine puking your guts out for eight hours in the bucket. Whether you've got something on your stomach or not. And still getting up and doing your job. That's me. I I told her I will leave you in better condition than you ever treated me. And you become humble when you get sick. You Your mind changes about everything. And my mind has changed about everything. I don't care how bad somebody does me. I'm going to leave them in a better place than they ever would have left me. And I'm just waiting for the lawyer to call. Give me you know, the legalities of what I, you know, but I'm on my way out. My resignation letter will be submitted before the end of today. And by the way, he got two others yesterday. Two other drivers gave their resignation letters. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? So, I, I just don't have the energy for it. I am at a place in my life where I have accepted my situation. I've made the best of it. And I'm not going to allow somebody to make my job any harder than it already is. It's not all that hard. I make my pickups on time. I make my deliveries on time. And he wants to manhandle somebody and control them. I'm not that type of person. I, I don't need you to tell me how to drive this truck or anything because I got that on all under wrap. I know how to trip plan. I know all that. But one thing I'm not ever going to do is I'm not going to give up my life and I'm not going to risk someone else's life when I don't feel good. Period. I just hope that somebody's got an answer for me because, you know, I already know I'm out. And that's okay. I'm fine with it. But I just need an answer because obviously for my situation, you know, it's not over till it's over. And I don't know when I'm not going to be here no more. You know what I'm saying? So this me being sick is going to be there, whether it's up front or back. But what I need that question answered like yesterday all right all about logistics out of illinois uh i'm gonna say this is probably a black ops company being that they're foreigners uh this young lady driver right here uh is unfortunately unable to drive and they're trying to force her to drive what stance do she have as far as uh finding out who can uh she could talk to to enforce the fact that you know if she's not any in condition to drive who can she turn to for help let us know in the comments below Tell you